Hello again, YouTube. Want to get you caught up on where we're at with the uh, El Camino. A couple weeks away from its maiden voyage, hopefully. Actually, hopefully less than a couple weeks. A couple weeks before its maiden trip. Uh, that's at the end of this month, so we're getting times getting a little closer. Uh, the engine compartment's starting to actually look like an engine compartment. Uh, the next step is really to get into the electrical, uh, trying to get the electrical system all hooked up and fabricated and uh, together. A uh, few systems we have to integrate, the American Auto Wire Classic Update wiring harness, <clears throat> which is basically the general wiring harness for the car. Then we've added electric fans, so that system needs to be integrated, as well as the uh, Classic Air heating and air conditioning system. Uh, there's a trinary switch that has to be integrated into the electric fans as well. So that's kind of the next major step. Um, I've got a few things that kind of ran afoul. Uh, one thing that I talked about a couple times is the manifold on the top of the compressor. Uh, and I ran into one other hiccup this week and I just I had to make a few custom parts. I just wanted to show you how I did that and kind of run you through the process and kind of the thought process and uh, maybe give you guys some ideas when uh, you run into a problem. Your answer is not always in a catalog. Uh, I purchased some parts. Uh, on my behalf, they were wrong. Uh, I just made a few errors in my uh, assumptions, so I had to uh, change course. Uh, about 10 o'clock last night, actually, I changed course and was able to create a solution with materials I had here, right here in the shop. So I ended up fabricating a part, and it really was not anything too crazy. I didn't need a uh, CNC mill or anything. You know, I used a drill press, a saber saw, uh, hand drill, some tap and die, grinder, little things like that, file. So all pretty basic tools. So, you know, with a little bit of creativity, you can get quite a bit done. Let me bring you in closer, show you what we got going on. So the engine compartment's starting to look like an actual engine compartment. Uh, electric fans are in there, radiator hoses are all in. Uh, you can see the air conditioning lines are fit up. Uh, the one on the far side, going to the evaporator, is just set in there for right now, just for an example. <clears throat> that actually runs into the passenger compartment. But belt's all set up, the radiator cap's on, the radiator's in. Um, like I said, I want to talk to you about uh, the manifold for the top of the compressor and down here is the original uh, thermostat housing off the Vortec motor. That was the problem uh, that I ran into last night and I had purchased a part from Summit Racing, nice quality part, it just I screwed up, I got the wrong um, size. So let me take a few things apart, I'll show you a little bit closer. All right, let's start out with the upper radiator hose and thermostat housing. This one was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, this is a standard small block Chevy, traditional old school small block Chevy. We're gonna say that that's the front of the engine, okay? Pointed that way. So the normal radiator hose comes off at this angle, pointed this way, uh, towards the driver's side of the vehicle and up towards the radiator. So the radiator would be up here. On this Vortec motor, the air conditioner, air conditioning compressor is right in this area here. So what they did for those motors is the, if you notice, this is, this is a traditional small block Chevy uh, thermostat housing and this is the one off the Vortec motor. The angle is nearly the same, uh, points in the same direction, but on the intake manifold, so this is the bolt pattern for the thermostat housing on a traditional small block Chevy, which is the intake manifold I have on this because I took off the fuel injection system and put on a carbureted. So on the fuel injected manifold from the factory, that bolt pattern is more in this orientation. So this thermostat housing actually points like that and the hose routes around the back side of the air compressor and around. So what did I need to do? I needed to take so I couldn't take just the factory one and just bolt it on there because it was pretty traditional. It was actually the bolt pattern that was different. So let's try to come up with a solution. Started looking around some of the aftermarket companies and AFCO, uh, big circle track uh, 
product manufacturer, sells an adjustable thermostat housing. So mounts in a traditional location and you can, it's actually very nice, it comes with an O-ring uh, groove in the bottom so there's no gasket, O-ring goes in there. But you can take this and you can rotate it and clock it 360 degrees around. Ideal. Doesn't that sound great? Not too expensive, it was 30 some bucks from Summit Racing. Very nice. Uh, not really into the chrome polish thing, but that's fine. Can anybody see what the problem is? <clears throat> I got this. Ooh, ah, we're gonna go put this on. It's gonna be great. If you look, the size of the outlet is significantly different. I believe this is an inch and a half, and this is like an inch and three eighths, uh, maybe five sixteenths, I think. So my radiator hose would not actually slip over the side of this. So the older small block Chevy has a larger radiator hose, upper radiator hose diameter. My radiator hose is smaller. Ugh. Beautiful part. Nice service. Summit Racing sent it quick. Wonderful. Yeah, I can't use it. Well, I can't easily use it. I might be able to find a radiator hose that fits it, but I just... It Okay, so what do you do? You've got this, you know it fits the radiator hose, but it's in the wrong orientation. <clears throat> Thermostat works with it, no problem. So we got a good part here, it's just trying to get it oriented properly. So uh, I went back to the pile of material in the back of the shop and found some 3 8 aluminum plate. And I said to myself, well, if I can bolt the plate down on the traditional small block Chevy bolt pattern and then turn this to clock it in the proper orientation, I could drill and tap some holes and bolt that on. Time for a CAD template, cardboard aided drafting. So these two bolt holes here, so I found a Saturn point, <coughs> made an outline from the original thermostat housing found the center holes of the two original ones. On the car I went and took this housing and clocked it the way I wanted. Put a few sharpie marks in this orientation, this orientation. Took a protractor and played around with it till I got a center line. Found out it was essentially 45 degrees. And this this clocking is not critical. I don't need to get it down to the uh, minutes or tenths, uh, seconds, I guess, minutes or seconds of an arc. It just needs to be roughly close. So it was about 45 degrees. So I did that. I took that 45 degrees. I found the center line of the original, put that 45 degree angle, measured the bolt pattern, came off the center, put those bolts in, and voila, I made myself a template. Enter the 3 8 plate. It does not look very exciting, but it actually works very well. One key thing is this hole, and this is actually the second one I made. The first one I didn't think properly, and I made this center hole larger. This center hole is what holds the thermostat into the intake manifold. So there's a, receive, a little recess in the intake manifold that holds this uh, thermostat sits down in, and the thermostat housing actually captures it. So it needs to be small enough. If this hole is larger than the diameter of this, this will just float around in there and that's bad. And that's what I did wrong the first time. Fortunately, I caught it. So I created a hole that was the size uh, enough to hold that. These two clearance holes are the distance and proper size for the small block Chevy, traditional small block Chevy. I've got some socket head cap screws to fit in there. And then this will fit just like that. A couple of bolts that thread right in there. And now all of a sudden this thing fits on and it's actually properly oriented for the radiator hose to come in there and get there. It's spaced up 3 eighths of an inch. It's got two extra bolts. It's gonna take an extra gasket. But all of these parts I had sitting around. I had a couple of socket head cap screws. The plate came out of a scrap from something. Um, so it took a while, took more than one try, 
Uh, but in the end, I've got a really good product. Obviously, I haven't cleaned it up yet or anything. I took the belt sander and uh, went around. And again, this was created with cardboard, pencil, protractor. Uh, the hole was done with a hole saw in the drill press. The small holes were just done with a hand drill, uh, cordless drill. Uh, tap these by hand. A uh, couple files. Like I said, I did use the belt sander to clean up the outside, but you could do that with a file as well. So this did not take a tremendous amount of tools or technology. It can be done. So it just worked out nicely. It's a win on my part. This is going to have to go back, unfortunately. Again, my bad, but uh, Summit has a very good return policy. And I got to make a custom part. 11 o'clock last night, I wasn't looking at it quite so cheery and rosy, but um, now that I got it done, it's really cool to actually accomplish it. Okay, moving on, I just wanted to do one more little recap on this manifold for the air conditioning. Because it spent, I spent a lot of time thinking about this. I didn't spend a lot of actual effort on it. It just took me a lot of time to come up with a solution. And that's kind of the hard part. Fortunately, on this car, I have a lot of things going on. So I could just set this aside for a while, not worry about it, think about it, do some research, come up with some ideas. So like I kind of uh, covered over some of the different earlier vlogs, Original one was this up and down manifold was going to run right into the hood. No good. So I bought this manifold, which both of these ports came this way, which caused the crisscross problem that we've talked about several times. So I did a lot of research online. It took a while to find a solution. Uh, and eventually I found a company that sells these two ports individually. Uh, so there's no center section, so they're just round. They just drop on there, and then there was a plate that captured them. That bolt went through, and when you screwed it down, it captured these two, so you could index these individually. That made me think, oh, what a good idea. It was a $50 manifold. These two manifolds were, are $50 a piece. I could have returned both of them, you know, so I, the, the cost would have been even up, you know, other than the return shipping on these. But one more thing I got to order, different company I haven't dealt with before and everything. So it made me think about it. And that's when I came out. And again, yes, I used a TIG welder to do this. So that's a little bit, it's, it's a pretty good investment actually. But uh, I used a TIG welder, a hacksaw, and some files. I want to show you that this is not a high quality weld. I mean, from that angle, it looks okay. But if you look at the top, it's pretty cruddy looking. And the bottom, same thing. But if you notice, all this area from, from here to here, it's just the bolting pattern. That's all that's there. There's nothing, there's no pressure going through there. There's no fluid going through there, gases, freon, whatever you want to call it. It's just the bolting area. So in all reality, all we want to do is keep these from turning. Wouldn't it be funny if this thing fell apart right now? Uh, but we just wanted to keep this indexed properly. So really, all these needed to be was some good size uh, tack welds, really. You know, uh, I guess my main point is, is you keep looking at this and think, I could make it a little bit better. I could make it a little bit better. There's a point in time where you should stop. Uh, trying to fill this in, it would look a little better. This is on the back. Nobody would ever see that thing. Um, functionally, this works. I could try to take this a little bit, get this all up in here and make it look real nice, and then file it off. Like I said, this is my first functional aluminum weld ever. There's no sense in me going any further. This creates uh, a function, you know, it serves the function. I made this strap for the top uh, just, to, just to equalize the load a little bit. It also conceals my really ugly joint there. And it also distributes the forces across both of these. So in all reality, I think it's a pretty elegant solution. Uh, I did take a little bit of a risk in the fact that you know, I cut apart this $50 fitting and if I screwed it up, it goes into the garbage. The other thing that uh, to note is I didn't know what kind of aluminum this is. Not all aluminum is weldable. So before I cut this thing apart, 
I lit up on it in one little small spot and just tried a small tack, I think it was back in here, just to see if it w I could even weld on it. You know, kind of a, a preparatory, preparatory test drive, see if it would work. And it did, so that's when I took off and went after it. So again, I just wanted to show you that. I, I wanted to show you the ugly part on the car. It looks a little bit better, so, but all in all, I'm really pleased. And you saw the end result. Uh, the lines fit in there quite nicely, and I'm, I'm quite pleased with it, so yeah. Thanks for coming along, I appreciate it. I will keep, uh, hopefully this week, uh, weather's gonna be good. I'm gonna get a lot of electrical done. I gotta get my fuel pump in. Electrical and fuel pump are really my last two things. Then I can put oil in the motor, prime the oil system, drop the distributor back in, and fire this bad boy up. So I don't think it's gonna be before the end of this week, but I would think, I would hope, by the middle of next week this thing should be running. Then I can do things like put a windshield in it and. Uh, more of those comfort type things. So thanks for following me along, following along with me. Uh, please uh, like, subscribe uh, to my channel. I'm going to be doing more workshop stuff as we go along after we get this project done. So thanks again. Talk to you soon.